Sure, yeah, there, there was, with the passing of the CARES Act, the $2 trillion CARES Act by, by Congress and signed it by Trump, there's been a, a lot of anticipation of, of helping small businesses and individuals out. And uh, here locally, uh, we continue to try to do that. Um, there's two different programs in the CARES Act uh, that, as it relates to small business. The first one is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. They call it the EIDL loan. And that's actually done directly to the SBA uh, website, so SB, uh, www.sba.gov. Uh, any small business would go there, um, uh, apply online. There's, uh, you'll have a portal. Uh, obviously, you'll, you'll input the application yourself manually. Uh, there's a uh, upload some tax returns and some other additional documents. Uh, it goes to the SBA for, a, for obviously for verification or approval. Uh, that type of loan is going to be used more for your operating capital types of loan. They're going to look at uh, your last two years worth of tax returns, figure out some form or fashion of a monthly type average, and then, and then give maybe six to eight, 10, 12 months worth of operating capital for those businesses that have closed uh, for the situation and just need uh, some capital in case this, uh, this COVID-19 stays out there longer than we hope. Um, that is actually a loan program. Uh, depending on what you borrow and, uh, and what the collateral may be, it could be uh, paid back anywhere from five years to 30 years at a fixed rate of 3.75. So it's a great fixed rate opportunity of chance to get some really cheap capital. Uh, it is a true loan program um, that, uh, that, again, over time you'd be paying back directly to the SBA. Uh, it also actually gives you an opportunity to go apply for, uh, for a portion of it that you can get immediately. Uh, so the EIDL program through, uh, through SBA.gov, uh, any small businesses go apply for an immediate $10,000. And uh, they say they'll get that $10,000 in five to seven days is what I've been told. But again, that's with the SBA, so I couldn't guarantee you that. But that money can also be used for, for payroll or anything you may need. And then depending on how the SBA documents and dictates how you spend it, uh, it would have the ability to be forgiven. And, uh, and so I would advise uh, all small businesses to go to SBA.gov. Uh, look for uh, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, again, the EIDL program. Uh, apply for it uh, and make sure you go ahead and apply for the additional, uh, the $10,000 immediate funding. Um, so that kind of takes care of the SBA program that, that is not handled by Community Bank. Um, there's a second program that, that most people are familiar with now, it's the Paycheck Protection Program. And that is handled by Community Banks here in town. And, um, and it is a, a program where the government uh, is going to, depending that you spend it like you're supposed to, the government is going to give you two and a half months worth of operating capital to spend on payroll um, costs. So anything from payroll costs can be pure wages, it can be uh, health care cost premiums, it can be retirement premiums, um, and then what they'll do is they'll take that, divide it by 12 for the year, multiply it times two and a half, and that's what you're eligible for. Um, if you do that, um, you've got eight weeks to spend the money, and then after that eight weeks, you come, in, come back to the bank and, and tell the bank, uh, this is how I spent the money. And we're still working through the documentation of what actually has to come back to the bank in order to get uh, for the loan to be forgiven. But if you do everything you're supposed to, the guidance reads that you would have that loan forgiven, meaning the SBA would just pay your debt off and you would not actually owe a dime. Uh, as long as you spend everything in accordance with the, with, the, with the agreement, which again, what you can spend it on is payroll expenses, rent, utilities, and then mortgage interest. So there's a lot of confusion as to how it's calculated compared to what you can spend it on. How it's calculated is just strictly two and a half times your monthly payroll average. And again, what makes up your payroll? It could be anything from payroll costs, which are wages, uh, health, and pre health premiums for a month, uh, retirement premiums for a month, and then state uh, unemployment tax. Federal, the federal income tax does not count for right now. You do have to exclude that. So take that number, uh, multiply it times two and a half, and that's how you get your, your monthly amount that you can be, or, or your two and a half times your monthly fee that you can get. Um, again, use it for eight weeks. If you use it strictly on payroll, utilities, rent, or mortgage interest, the way the guidance reads is 100% of that would be forgiven and paid off by the uh, SBA. What we don't know at this point still is, is what type of documentation you're going to need to bring to the bank in order to get that, that cleared up so that we can report back that you used it appropriately. Um, documentation on the front end, how, how, you know, how do we actually apply for that loan? Uh, you can go to the website, U.S. Treasury website, um, and on that U.S. Treasury website, there's a red scroll bar across the middle of it, and it's talking about COVID help for small businesses. Click on that link and you'll see there, there'll be a PPP application for borrowers. 
and they'll need to complete that application. And depending on what type of business they are, uh, there'll be certain documentation they'll need to bring us, and I'll run through real quick what that may be. If you're a true business, you're an LLC, a corporation, PLLC, professional association, uh, you'll need to bring the application itself. And this is just Planners Bank. Every bank is doing a little bit differently. But for Planners Bank, you would need to bring the application itself completed. Um, your 941s for 2019, which would show us your taxable wages. Um, you would need to bring documentation of who would need to sign or who can sign on behalf of the corporation, which would be minutes. Or if you're an LLC, we would need your operating agreement. If you do pay health care, we would need uh, a monthly statement showing your premium. And if you do do retirement, we'd need, um, we would need a retirement statement showing what was paid in 2019. And then we would need your most recent tax return. So if you don't have your 19 tax return, that's fine. Uh, get all those other documents for 2019 and just bring us your 2018 tax return. Um, if you are a sole proprietor, you can currently file now just as a business can. Uh, sole proprietors, what we need is, your, is the completed application and your tax return. Because the way we're, we understand it, your sole proprietors file based on the, the tentative profits of their Schedule C, which is their, their business. So their net income of their business. All we do is we... Divide that number by 12, multiply it times two and a half, and that would be the number that they would be eligible for. Um, contract labor, uh, which does the 1099s, as well as self-employed, which should be Schedule K-1s, are available to apply this coming up Friday. Um, if you're a contract labor, what we need to do, again, it's going to be the same application on the U.S. Treasury website. Uh, you'll need to complete. You'll need to get a total of all your 1099s, add those up, divide them by 12, multiply it times two and a half, and that's what you're eligible for. Um, so when you come to the bank, Planners Bank, we would need the, the application filled out as well as, as a copy of all the 1099s you have for 2019. For self-employed, we would need the uh, same application, need the same application completed, and a schedule of your K-1 from your partnership. We're still working through the documentation of the K-1s as it pertains to S-Corps and trying to figure out if the guidance allows S-Corp K-1 income to be included in this program or not. So. As we continue to fill that one out and figure that one out, we'll make sure we get that information out. But for right now, uh, businesses, any type of business that files their income tax separately or sole proprietors can go ahead and apply. Uh, and then co independent contractors and self-employed individuals can start applying on Friday. What I would say, every, every business runs a little bit differently. Obviously, sole proprietors run a little bit differently. Uh, what I would suggest is when you start completing this application, if you do have any questions, uh, call your local banker. We'd be happy to try to answer them. We are not an accountant by any means, so we are not an agent where we can be counted on to give you the exact answer, but we can read through the guidance for you and, and hopefully uh, decipher what may be, may be the right answers. Or you could also call your accountants. They've been a big help. Uh, all the local accountants have been a big help to the bank. They've been packaging these applications for their clients and then send them to us, which is, just speeds up the process. Right now, I know the big question is, uh, for small businesses we hear all the time is, am I approved and when am I going to get funded? And those are two very important questions. What we can tell you right now, uh, again, every bank's handled a little bit differently, but at Planners Bank, when you go in with the application, as long as we input it properly and we've got all the documentation up front, your approval can be done in 10 seconds once we submit it. So the approval process is very quick. The disbursement of the funds is going to take a little bit of time. We, um, as of this morning, we had done, in Greenville, we had done approximately 100 PPP loans. And our, across the bank, we had done approximately, I think exactly 351 loans. So you can see the influx of number of loans has been tremendous over these last three days. So we've just asking our customers to bear with us as we work through the, the, uh, the documentation of getting these loans printed, getting them signed and funded. I'd like to tell you that uh, we're going to be able to get it done in three to five days. I think probably the, the most accurate statement would be we're going to get it done as quickly as we can. And when, uh, when we do have that paperwork printed, we're letting you know when you're approved. And then when we do have that paperwork printed, we're going to call you ASAP so we can get you in and sign and get you your money. So um, if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to call me. I'm at Flatters Bank, 335-5258. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have.